Hello everyone, welcome to the Ultimate API Challenge, a place where we work, grow and learn together with different APIs as well as a variety of stack in order to hopefully by the end create a result that you could put on your web development portfolio. Your knowledge level doesn't play the biggest role, your willingness to learn and challenge yourself does. To find more about the project and maybe previous challenges, check out the link in the description below. In this video, we will be building a lyrics search engine using a public API, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, as well as jQuery and its Ajax method. It's a fairly simple challenge aimed to practice some coding and some jQuery methods. So let's get started. As usual, we're gonna go to the github page to get the starter files you can see here a little bit of a description and what we're going to be building once we have the starter files we have images which is the main image if you open the index.html that's how it's going to look like and we have pretty rc favicon or favicon we have helpers instead of us coding it together i decided to put the main helper functionality which i have already covered in the two previous challenges in that jokes and yes no api so if you want to go and check them out to have like a more thorough understanding behind the logic of those then go ahead we're just going to be referring to those and using them then as usual we have our index.html our script.js our style where we have all the styling defined and let's get back to our script.js we have steps we are going to be following if you have done already before some challenges you will know that most of the time when working with html and javascript we are targeting html elements from the javascript and we end up first using them and then storing them in a variable so in order to save this kind of thing that keeps on happening to us we're going to straight away declare them so in our javascript script.js we're going to define our three main elements the form that we have here which is the input together with the button then we have a separate element of the form as well as separate element for the button let's declare those const search form dollar sign and in order to know which element it is search form it's an id search form then we have const search button which is here search dash button and const search input equals to search input save it Cool. You see that we have the semicolons, that's prettier. If you've done several challenges already, you know about that. Now let's refer to our steps. In a step one, we need to add an event listener to the form and to the button. As we have two events, let's create a function called register search form events. Function search form events. Let's start with the form search form and a form has an event of submit and with jQuery you can just write dot submit as long as we found the element with jQuery and inside of it we're going to write a function which is going to be called every time we have a submit event on our form. The way forms work is that if you submit them they usually reload the page and we want to prevent that so we can do that by e dot prevent default and of course we can console log our e just to check that things are working. Let's not forget to call our function register form event reload the page open the console click on enter we're getting the event second event is going to be on our button search button dot click function just console log clicked Let's refresh search clicked awesome add an event listener to the form and the button done now these two events should call a function that is going to start our api request let's declare this function search query and now we need to refer to the documentation however there is a note here by the time of recording the documentation changed a little bit and the information i had while building this project is not available anymore i will need to guide you through it a little bit so we cannot refer to the docs right now but the api endpoint is still available and still working so we're just going to be using it but with my guidance if we check our lyrics api we first can enter hey search we see results then we click on a random one and we have another result so what is happening behind the scenes is that this one is one api call and this one is another api call and for this api call information that i had is not available anymore however the endpoint is available so i'm going to walk you through it and the next api endpoint we're going to refer to the docs so the endpoint looks like this where the query is whatever the user is inserting in this input field this part is already stored in our endpoint we can write const url template literals because we're going to construct it and point slash suggest slash query in our case our query let's make it hey 
As mentioned, we're going to be using Ajax in here, so let's start writing dollar sign dot Ajax accepts an object with URL as our URL, a success key accepts a callback and is going to pass a response to it, as well as there is an error. Console log response. Okay, let's write. We didn't tie it up. Let's call it on a click of a button. That's our response. Data. Awesome, that works. Now let's tie it up with our input field. So we have a variable called query, but this one is a hard coded one. Let's get one from our input field, search input. And the only thing you need to do is dot val. That's how we're gonna get the query. Refresh, write hey search, and we get the response. Let's try it out with something else to see that it works well. Here we get another response, data, yellow, 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 cool. Step number two is done. Now step number three, build a list with the results where each item has a button, get lyrics, and read out the artist and song name of the list item that was clicked. First, let's build a list with the results. That's it, a list with the results. If you haven't done any challenge before, especially not the weather API challenge, I've been talking there about separation of concern and a thing called MVC. I really recommend you to check out that challenge because we really go in depth there into that. But to sum it up, the way I output things to HTML or to the template, so first we're fetching it, then we're processing it, preparing the data to actually be what our HTML expects, and then putting it in the HTML. Following that logic, we're going to have a function called setData, which is going to receive data. This function is essentially going to form the data before sending to the next one, like a middleware. And then this function is gonna call another one with the already formed data. Call the next function show results list. Let's create our show results list. And I would suggest to create it in the helpers because we already have selectors defined. Let's scroll down to the bottom of it and write function show results list. And it's gonna be doing this. You can stop the video right here and code it yourself, or you can also grab this snippet from the finished result that you can find in GitHub. So from here we see that this function expects artist name, let's write it here, artist name, a title, and an index. So those are the three things that the set data should form and give it to us. Get back to here. Whenever we call show results list and we're able to call this function from here, even though we don't import the helpers in here because we have imported it in the HTML. So this is what it wants to receive. Let's check again where we are receiving the response. So if I search for yellow response.data. So we need to call the set data with response dot data. Now the data is going to be this array. Comment this one for now. We're going to create a loop with jQuery because we have here an array and from this array we want to retrieve the artist name and the title. Our data is going to be available. Artist name is going to be in data dot artist dot name. The title is going to be in data dot title. Let's write a loop with jQuery. First, we're defining what we're going to loop over and then our second argument index entry. We can move this down here, uncomment it and write const in front of it. Also move this up here. And we have all these things that the show results list expects. We have the artist name that we extracted from the data, the title, and we have the index. But I'm sorry, this is not data, this is entry because we're looping over the data and we want for each entry, we want to receive this information. Shall we try it out? Nothing happened. I think nothing happened because I didn't save the helpers. Do we have anything here? Oh, of course, I have a class of denon. If I remove it, yeah. All right, so let's change that. We have helper functions. For example, first one, show results container, as well as show search loader. And in here, we can use the scroll to search results. So scroll to search results is just gonna animate our little scroll thingy. Then show results container, which is going to remove the denon and add a class to show it and search loader. Okay, let's try it out now. Refresh the page. Hey, search. Et voila. 
Okay, we got this one to work. Let's clean this one up. In our error, we can use also another helper function that we have from the helpers. Show search error and scroll to search results. Double check that everything works. Hey, okay, we don't have the event of submit. We have the click. Let's fix that. Touch it here and let's check. Hey, and I press on enter. Yeah, works, cool. Now we're gonna deal with this button. Let's go to the official docs. Here they are. As you can see, the only thing that you can do here is to search. So in here we see that there is a get request for artist and title. We need to pass those in order to receive a response. Let's copy this one. This is gonna be our new URL. Create a new function and const URL equals, again, template literals because we're going to construct it. This one is already what we have above and point slash v1 slash artist is also going to be a variable for us as well as the title now how do we get from the button this information let's get back to our helpers and see how we output information to the template on the button we have something called data dash artist where we store the artist name and data dash title where we store the title of the entry if we investigate this button we will see that we have data artist chemical surf and data title hey 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 those things are a available to us once we click on the button. So this is a way how you can actually get the information from exactly what the user has clicked. So let's try it out. Um, how are we gonna try it out? First, we need to add an event listener to this button. And the way how we add an event listener to this button is after this template is created, because if we're gonna try to register the event in this place where we registered the other two, it's gonna fail because first of all, we're not gonna find it on the page. And second of all, we don't even have the information that we need in order to find this because the idea of the button is get dash lyrics dash index and the index comes to us once we have the array of the data long story short we need to register it here we're gonna target the id that we have just declared gonna use template literals for that dot click because we want to get an event on click function and it's important to pass the event because the event is the one that is going to give us this data information from here we can call the get lyrics from the script js and pass the event since this function is already doing a little bit too much and different things output in and register an event i would suggest to put this in another function register get lyrics event and we're going to pass to it the index that we need to target the button with and now we're going to call it save it let's get to our get lyrics pass here the event and let's see what we're getting log e. we're gonna refresh again hey submit and let's take a little recharge open the console click artist is not defined yeah that's fine that's our error from here let's save it go to e target here it is and then we have data set and in data set, we have artist and title. Every time you wanna access this data dash something, you can access it via e.target.dataset and then the respective term that you appended it with. So in our case, we're going to have const artist e.target.dataset.artist. And same goes for the title. And these things, artist and title, you can define whichever term you want. This comes from here, where we have outputted it in the template and we decided that this is going to be named this way. Shall we console log artist and title? Artist, title. And I'm doing it in curly brackets because that's what I'm used to. And you'll see now why. So you see this way, it actually says artist is this and title is this. If I'm going to remove these curly brackets, then what you're going to see is this. And sometimes when you actually need to know which variable stores which information, it can be pretty useful all right it works now we can continue with our ajax request dollar dot ajax open object url is url success is a function with a response as well as an error is a function let's console log our response in case we have an error let's console log there is an error you think it's gonna work hey little richard hey 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 response lyrics look at that awesome there is though one little thing that should be mentioned sometimes the lyrics can be empty and the api doesn't necessarily throw an error so we do need to check here if the lyrics are empty because we should show the user that there are no lyrics even if there is no error if response.lyrics equals an empty string we're going to show lyrics error and scroll to lyrics result and since it's going to be also here the same how about we're going to create a function called show lyrics error and it's going to call those two functions we only need to call it once 
if we don't find anything we also want to return you can return it this way you can return it like this it's up to you let's keep it like that because we're not actually returning the value of the function if we do have our response we're not gonna prepare the data as we did before because we don't have anything to loop over it's a single element that we just need to output let's save it and in the helpers where we have show results list create function show lyrics result and the template for it is this one again you can stop the video and type it or get it from the finished result on github and we see here that we need artist name title and lyrics kind of the same like before artist name title and lyrics copy it now we know Know what we need to send artist name we already have it from the event from the button so we can reuse that as it's in the same scope then we have the title and the lyrics are response.lyrics yeah I cannot do response.lyrics so maybe we don't have to pass it as an object pass it this way let's see if that works hey little Richard no that didn't work why didn't it work I forgot to put this show lyrics loader and then to scroll to the lyrics because in the scroll we have a height of the loader and basically all the chain of events happens which now that i think about it is a little bit confusing to build but you can change that hey look we have it cool did we skip through all of our steps create a function that gets the request and then extend the app with disable loading error states for the ui accordingly i think we did it let's see what we get when we don't have a lyric let's try with yellow oh you see what happens we need to clear out this thing and i have a helper function for that clean up existing results and this we should call before we submit a new request for the first query now that i'm checking here i also have is input empty and we can use that for the query because we don't want to submit a request with an empty query we're gonna check if it's empty because is input empty is going to return true or false if is input empty then return else we're gonna do the rest hey and now if i do yellow yes it updated it perfect and now we have this lyrics the way the lyrics are presented is not the best css wise but this is something i would like to leave to you to practice css and to see if you can manage to make it look a little bit nicer because you know it needs to be as lyrics you know you cannot just like cut after every four words or after every five words there is a, a twist there so check that one out if you can solve it and let me know in the comments if you could <laughs> That would be cool. So I think apart from that, we are done. Except of this one. If we write yellow, we get the first lyrics. And then if I want another lyrics, it wasn't showing it. It's still not showing it. Why it doesn't update? It is working here. Yeah, it does. So what did we do differently? oh here i see it so we're not scrolling here and here we can reuse this function that we already created okay let's try again hey da -da -dum, and hey no oh <laughs> okay you know why i don't know how i didn't notice that but the function named the same it's not gonna work because it's not gonna know which function to call and it's probably gonna call the first one it finds and that's in this file no lyrics were found hey well done so while this challenge seemed like a pretty lightweight one it's still was nice to see some tiny bits of what we should and shouldn't do work with jquery a little bit more and see which methods it has to offer as well as check different states of our UI and prepare the data for the UI. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments if you did. And also let me know if you're gonna try to make the CSS of this lyrics a little bit nicer. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know about them. And I see you next time. Bye. <laughs>